Well, we have successfully been able to read integers from a file. So what about uh, other things? So could we read strings from a file? So here's a file full of names. Let's see what we can do with those. To get started, I'm going to go ahead and comment out all these we've done so we don't keep getting all that same printout. I can go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and keep that file open, that um, ifstream object in. And now we're going to create a new one. So what we want to do is we want to open this file name.txt. So we do it the same way we did before, is we define it, we say the type, and we want it to be an input file stream, so ifstream. We give it a name, and I'm going to call this one infile. Notice this is just like any variable. You can make up your own name, and this is an object uh, slash variable. Remember, they mean the same thing. So that's what I want, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and initialize it. I'm going ahead and open it, open the file all on the same line. And to do that, you use parentheses and in quotes put the name of the file. And the name of the file is name.txt, but remember that uh, it's up one folder. We're in the build folder and we need to go up one to get to it. So we need to put that dot dot slash in front of it. Okay, so now what this did is this created an ifstream object name in file and it opened the file name.txt and did it all in one line. Now this is what we did before in two lines. Here we defined it and here we opened it. Notice that when you do it on a single line you don't need the dot open. And this is how you create it and initialize it already connected to this file and it opens the file when you do that. Either way works. They both do exactly the same thing, so either way is fine. Now this is an input file, so if we're not able to read from it, then uh, we want to not, we want to close down the file. So we want to do the, exactly the same thing, except now we're going to be saying if uh, infile.file, right? Because it's the object dot method approach. So in, and remember you need the parentheses for a method call. So if in file dot fail, and up here that's what we did, except we did in dot fail because the name of the object here is in, and the name of the object here is in file. And they're connected, they're different objects and they're connected to different files. And we simply do the same thing. In fact, I can go ahead and copy this because this the message is exactly the same. And we definitely want to use return one. We want to shut down the program if it doesn't work. So there we've got that created and ready to go. So we've opened it and we've put our safety buffer there to identify whether it's was op we could open or not. All right, let's go ahead and open uh, one. Now this time we want to create an, we're going to create an array again, and but this time it's going to be of type string, because we're going to get those names and we want those to be of type string. Uh, but we can use the same size. So we can use that k max size. Oh, not that one. Getting too much help. All right, so that's how big we want it. And now we can name it whatever we want. And I'm going to name it names. So this is an array called names. And it's of type string. And it's exactly the same size as our ages array. All right, uh, so now what am I going to do? Now this time I also want to fill it. So I'm going to use names.fill. But now there's strings. So now I need to fill it with a string rather than with a character. So I'm going, or rather than with an integer, so I'm going to fill it just with a hyphen, and that'll identify that this is an empty string, okay, that it just was initialized and empty. So let's go ahead and um, do one other thing. Let's go ahead and get a size for this so we can keep track of which one, which index we're currently at. So I'm just going to call this name size, and I'm going to start it out at zero because that's the first index that we want to do. All right, now we've got an array ready. Now we can read it. Now, if we do in file the same way that we did, and we store it in names, uh, uh, name size. 
Let's see what happens. And then let's go ahead and print all, I'm going to print all of them in the file. So I'm going to skip down here to print all of the elements in the names array. I'm going to say what it is, so all elements in the names array. Okay, and I'm going to put a carriage, carriage return in front and a carriage return in the back. And then I'm going to print them out. And here I'm going to do the for int i. And now I want to go as long as I'm going to do k max size because I want all of them. Okay, and what do we want to do? I'm simply going to see out names i. Okay, let's see what we get. Oh, errors. Okay, kmax size was not declared in this scope, so let's go find out what happened to that. I probably commented it out. Sure enough, I did. So we can go ahead and keep that array here. Okay, let's go back. Now notice when you're doing errors, fix the top error and run it again. Sometimes that top error will fix a whole bunch of things. So just go ahead and run, check, top, fix the top one and then run it again. And sure enough, that got rid of all of the errors, even though the bunch of errors got gone with one single fix. Okay, now notice what we got. We have a lot of hyphens, 23 of them, but from the file we got Collins comma. All right, and if we look at that, what we were hoping to get was Collins comma space bill. Right, but when we use the extraction operator, again the file opens up right here, and when you use the extraction operator, it reads till it gets to the first white space and then it stops, and that's exactly what it did. So again, we need to use get line. So if we go down here and instead of using uh, in file, what we want to use is get line. So we're going to use get line, and then in parentheses, the first thing we're going to put is the stream where we're getting it from, and we're getting it from the if stream in file. And then the next parameter is, a con is where you want to store it. And we want to store it in the names array at our current index. And now let's try that. And there we go. We were able to get the whole thing. And the, and the rest of the array has that default value that we have in it. And that's how you read a string from a file.